Number 26. While punting a football, a kicker rotates his leg about the hip joint. The moment of inertia of the leg is 3.75 kilogram meter squared, and its rotational kinetic energy is 175 joules. What is the angular velocity of the leg? All right. Um, so here's a simplified picture. Okay, here's his leg or her leg, whatever. Um, and the leg is rotating right about the hip joint, which is going to be located right here. The leg then has a certain angular velocity to it, and it also has a certain tangential velocity as well. Okay, so now the first question is, uh, what is the angular velocity? So I have to think about, well, I need to find omega. And they told me the rotational kinetic energy in the moment of inertia. So how do those three variables relate to one another? Oh, that's simple, right? That's the formula over here on the right-hand side. So that it, the formula tells me that the kinetic energy of rotation is equal to one half multiplied by the moment of inertia multiplied by the that rotational, um, or I should say, angular velocity squared. So if I need to find this angular velocity, we just have to do you know some algebra, right? Basically, uh, multiply this side by two to get rid of the half, and you got to multiply that side by two, and then divide out the i from both sides as well. Okay, so you would be left with omega squared is equal to 2ke r over i and then notice we got to get rid of that square right so we got to take the square root of both sides and when we do that there we go so here's the formula easy peasy so the angular velocity is simply going to be the square root of 2 multiplied by that kinetic energy of 175 joules divided by that moment of inertia which they told us was 3.75 and all we now need to do is plug it on in so square root 2 times 175 divided by, whoops, must be very important today. I must be very important. Phone is ringing off the hook. Point, uh, 9.66. I'm just kidding. I'm not very important. Uh, 9.66 times 10 raised to the nothing. <laughs> times 10 raised to the nothing. There you go. That would actually be valid. Um, this is also in terms of uh, radians per second. Okay. I know my omega looks like a W, but that's omega. And that's the angular velocity. So this value over here, we know it's 9.66 radians per second. Okay, that takes care of letter A. How about letter B? What is the velocity of the tip of the punter's shoe if it is 1.05 meters from the hip joint? Now they're asking us for the velocity of the, the punter's shoe, right? Right at the tip. Now, uh, in terms of then... What type of velocity is this? It's basically the tangential velocity, okay? Interpreting it, interpreting it in that fashion. So the, what we now have to think about is, well, how does tangential velocity relate to you know, a radius and an angular velocity? You have to remember this formula, that the tangential velocity will equal the radius of rotation multiplied by that angular velocity. So really, it's fairly straightforward, right? All we have to do is plug in the radius of, of rotation. So that's 1.05, as they mentioned. And the angular velocity we just found, right, which was the 9.66. I'm going to use the more exact value here when I calculate, but, I mean, it's pretty well close to that value anyway, just so you know. <clears throat> so when I do this calculation, just take the prior answer, 9.66, and multiply it by 1.05, and we get 10.1. Okay, 10.1. And that is in terms of now meters per second. And that's that. And then for letter C, what does it ask us? It says, explain how the football can be given a greater velocity, can be given a, sorry, a velocity greater than the tip of the shoe necessary for a decent kick distance. So essentially, um, we have to, did they tell us the math? Yeah, we, we probably have to make some assumption here, but I think the assumption is fairly safe. Um, the assumption is that the, the mass of the football is less than the mass of the leg. I think that's probably pretty safe to make. Now, if that is the case, and you remember the concepts of you know conservation of momentum, all right, back from your prior chapter, um, we know that whatever momentum is then imparted at the point at which the foot makes contact with the ball has to be conserved. We can assume that it's in an elastic collision. For if, if it were inelastic, there'd be no such thing as kicking a field goal, uh, or a punt for that matter. 
And um, if it's if we understand then the nature of the elastic collision, we know that since momentum is conserved, and remember that we have um, so P I is equal to P F, right? I know that we'd have to expand on this a little more, but essentially uh, the reason why the football could have a larger velocity than the leg is because the mass is smaller, all right? Remember the formula P is equal to MV, right? So if the momentum initially and finally are the same, and we are then, so this P has stayed the same, right? That's the important feature, the P has stayed the same, and the mass of the foot has then gone down, what has to happen to the velocity in order to keep the P from unchanging? Well, it has to increase. So that's the reason. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I'm not sure if that was very or berry, one of the two. It was actually a combination. It was a synthesis of it. So thank you very much for <laughs> tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, tell your friends, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video. And also, I'm not really sure why this is a six. That should be a C. I don't really know how that turned into a six, but anyway, take care.